Hello folks and welcome to the video. Recently I bought the Humble Bundle Striking Souls-like game bundle which included a bunch of games in it that I'm going to be reviewing. Obviously they are from the Souls-like genre so uh, a genre that's quite fun and has spawned a lot of different games and such so we're going to see if they're any good. Today first up we are reviewing Mortal Shell so I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons while I have some of the gameplay footage running in the background there for you. I played through probably about, uh, I would say, an hour, an hour and a half of this game. This is going to be just kind of a first impressions. If I actually finish through and, uh, you know, complete the game, that sort of thing, I will go ahead and post a video on that as well. Uh, we'll start with the cons first, because that's what everybody loves to hear, right? So, the enemies can pop up close to the player. There seems to be some issues with rendering over distance. I noticed, especially in the first area, that there was a lot of pop-in happening on the enemies. You'd be running in towards a camp, and then you're like five feet away from it, and the enemies finally decide to spawn. So now you're just kind of sitting there super close to them with a bunch of enemies all around you kind of thing, which is kind of iffy, uh, especially if you're going against some of the bigger enemies there that have, you know, uh, long weapons and such that can reach you. The AI is surprisingly easy to cheese so uh, basically all you have to do in this game is get one or two strikes in dodge back one or two strikes dodge back and I mean that's kind of the gameplay mechanics that made Dark Souls famous is one or two strikes and then dodge spamming but that's as really prevalent here in Mortal Shell. I do really like though how you can inherit or not inherit how you can like actually inhabit your body again after you've died it's got like a cool Sekiro type thing going on there which is awesome. For some of the positives and this is going to be a very quick video I'm not dallying around on this at all so the setting and the music are pretty grim but also very cool because of that so it's a super dark gritty kind of fantasy setting. There's not a whole lot going on in terms of visual differentials at least as far as I got into the game it's all kind of a drab dark black and green tone to it which is pretty cool. The setting is really well complemented by the music what little of it there is. The enemies are reactive to things you do so for example if you roll up on a camp and you absolutely slice somebody down there's a good chance his friends are actually going to be sent reeling onto their backside because they're shocked at what you just did to their buddy which is really cool to see a feature like this in a game especially something that feels more like a, an indie title. So kind of like I mentioned there's the cool second life idea which is again kind of like uh, Sekiro there where you know you're not necessarily dead until you get hit again. I do really like that it adds Adds kind of something else to the gameplay loop instead of just the regular die and respawn. Once you get the hang of it, the combat is actually very fun. There feels to be very good weight behind your swings, both you and the enemy, with the visual effects that pop up as well as the sounds and everything like that. It just feels very impactful. It is easy to cheese, obviously, but you know, that gets a little bit harder to do the further you get into the game with the harder enemies that start to appear. Because all those factors combined, it does get fun the more it goes on. Uh, it has very good sound design, so uh, the overall sound design in the game in terms of the sound effects themselves, as well as when they're played, those sorts of things are very, very good. I did notice that there was some latency, like between, you know, certain swings and such connecting and the sound playing, but it's not the biggest deal, and the sound quality itself definitely does make up for it. In my opinion, the UI is absolutely perfect so the user interface for anyone who's not familiar it is perfect in this game it's very minimalistic you got your health bar you got your stamina and then you got your currencies as well as your usables and that is pretty much it there's no useless clutter on the screen there's no waypoints for quests uh, it's basically you just explore the world you enjoy it there's nothing on the UI that you don't need to see at any one given time and that is absolutely amazing I do love that that is kind of something that Dark Souls perfected so it has Dark Souls-esque story and world building and the reason I say that is not necessarily because of the quality of the story or the lore, but more so because you have to run around in this open world, open world-ish at least. You don't really know what you're doing, who you are, why you're there, where you came from, what the end goal is, nothing like that. You're kind of just exploring and making that up for yourself and finding out more as you go on through, you know, little clues and such that are buried throughout the world. I did like that there are weapon arts and upgrades. So this is very cool. My art that I put on my sword, it actually allows me to uh, stab people with kind of a spear that's embedded into the sword. I basically cheesed one of the first bosses in the game. I ran past him, grabbed a chest because it wasn't locked until after his death for some reason. I got the weapon upgrade from there, crawled away through a tunnel. I'll try to include footage of that, I guess. And now I have the upgrade for my weapon, even though I didn't beat the boss, so that is absolutely fantastic. And the final thing I want to mention here is that the difficulty seems to have a nice, steady progression. So you're not really feeling a huge difficulty spike at any one given time, but then once you start to look back at the enemies 
you faced in the early game, it's very clear that the game has spike in difficulty. It's just been so gradual and such a ramp up to it with new enemies and such that you'll get to points where you start dying continuously. I certainly did, but it never really feels too much. You'll start to be able to adapt to their skill sets and overcome it, which is amazing. There's no real hard locks yet, apart from, you know, the first boss if you did actually fight him, which, I mean, realistically, you probably don't really need to if you can just steal the loot anyways, like I mentioned, right? So thank you guys so much for watching. There is going to be a playlist here that's going to have all of the links to the Humble Bundle reviews that I'm doing, so make sure to check that out, and you guys have a fantastic day.